hmm. most serious learners and uh, i think uh, professor agrawal is going to join with us soon uh -huh. sir ab aage हम्म तो फ्रेंड्स आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू माइट हैव डन योर एग्जाम रजिस्ट्रेशन टू बिगिन विद with the questions and uh, i think a huge number of learners have already registered for our academic writing course so welcome sir pranam so professor rajat is with us a warm namaskar, welcome namaskar sir ji pranam sir pranam sir so i warmly welcome on behalf of all the learners the family of academic writing professor rajat agrawal head department of management studies uh from india's pride institute iit roorkee so sir most welcome in our live interaction so we are here with our uh, you know most serious learners of our course with us obviously you can understand in the journey of online courses if some persons are attending the live interaction it means they are the most uh, serious learners with us so on behalf of all our learners i warmly welcome you for the live interactions uh so opening remark uh, uh, from professor agrawal sir thank you professor samriti hope i am audible yes sir but there is some uh, echo coming i don't know from where this echo is coming mm okay now now it is okay now it ha. is okay yes. yeah so uh, very good afternoon to all the participants learners students uh, of this uh, academic writing open uh, online course in fact uh, professor similti was instrumental in designing some of those courses which are uh, most popular on this uh, mooc platform and uh, so uh, there there are uh, different types of questions uh, which are coming and uh, we will love to answer those questions you see Uh, when we designed this course and uh, i was also part of professor sabilities team at that time and uh, particularly at that time the issue of uh, generative ai was not so serious and uh, now the issue of generative ai is uh, very very important while we are writing our research papers while we are making our project reports uh, there is a huge scope that you can use uh, facilities of chat gpt etc and uh, it may create uh, a, a lot of content for yourself so why uh, sometime you may get some sort of uh, short success immediate success with those types of content which is generated through some kind of artificial uh, measures but in the opening remark i will like to caution you that in long term you may have to face uh, some kind of uh, let's say hardships because of uh, these kind of shortcuts when you write a research paper when you are contributing in a journal you are considered to be an expert of that area so academic writing is not limited to just writing part but it is also very much related to your expertise in that area and people may expect you to deliver talks they may invite you for uh, seminars keynote and addresses based on your academic writings and then if you are not delivering up to their standard then uh, obviously because everything is known within the peer group so therefore we call it as peer review process so we understand that uh, who is doing quality work who is not doing quality work you may become uh, associate professor you may become professor in your organization because of uh, academic writing but ultimately we need to see that uh, whether the bigger purpose of contributing to the body of knowledge is uh, achieved or not whatever we are writing that is our addition to this uh, body of knowledge 
and slowly slowly with our uh, small drops this ocean is uh, getting bigger and bigger and uh, uh, that is one very important thing which i will like to say in this uh, session that uh, we have to be very careful in using any kind of shortcut measure we have to be very very careful uh, because of the easy availability of these uh, chat gpt type of tools which uh, uh, are going to be very very dangerous for yes i also suggest one thing that uh, when you have these tools you should know that uh, what type of ideas you can take from those tools so yeah. uh, i am not saying that we should not use these tools you need to know where the technology is going how technology can support you but you should uh, know that what is the limitation of the technology and where you as a human can contribute ahead of the technology so that is very important otherwise uh, uh, we uh, very often see this type of challenges where uh, you may get uh, some kind of trouble because of these things the second important thing academic writing is uh, generally considered more or less related to publication in reputed journals but uh, academic writing is uh, also related to writing of books academic writing is also related to writing of various reports academic writing is also related uh, development of various course materials also so all these are the different uh, you can say uh, dimensions in which uh, you can uh, contribute by being a good researcher by being a good academician by being a good uh, outreach expert also for example recently i got an opportunity of developing a training manual for uh, developing the entrepreneurship in the tribal women and uh, developing that manual itself i consider it is an part of my academic activity i know about entrepreneurship i have studied i teach that in iit rurki but now converting that knowledge so that uh, tribal women can use that knowledge or that uh, manual for improving their entrepreneurial skills that is also as per me is uh, an example of uh, academic writing how simplified and here comes the role that language is not a barrier you you can contribute academic writing in any language so i developed that manual in hindi language because it was related to um, uttarakhand uh, up uh, mp in these uh, hindi speaking bands so the uh, entire manual was developed in hindi language so that uh, those people can actually use it there are many such examples where academic writing is uh, reflected in multiple ways so uh, you need to understand that uh, the horizon is much bigger it's not limited to uh, simply uh, paper publications but it is uh, possible to contribute in variety of ways and therefore uh, you also need to explore uh, i have seen uh, in some of the public schools also that uh, lab manuals professor seventy runs uh, pharmacy program at uh, gadwal university so there are uh, at 12th physics please mute yourself abhika ji patel madam madam patel ah uh, please mute yourself thank you i cut off sir baki yeah so i was saying that in those public schools when i got opportunity to visit the manuals of physics uh, manuals of chemistry labs uh, manuals of biology labs uh, is part of uh, their entire contribution coming from the teachers uh, and they have in fact copyrighted all those lab manuals properly submitting to the office of copyright uh, government of india they got copyright on their lab manuals that no other school can use their lab manuals without their permission so that also becomes a type of academic writing so uh, my uh, simple submission is that there are uh, variety of ways in which you can contribute however it is also true that in the beginning of our life 
in the beginning of this professional journey, we generally think about paper publication as the most important aspect of uh, uh, academic writing. But uh, there may be many, many forms and we also need to be very careful with respect to use of uh, various AI related tools. And particularly this time I can say chat GPT is a big issue. So at IIT Nurki, uh, few years back, about two years back, we had this discussion. Should we have official licenses of chat GPT or not? And uh, because uh, should we promote it or should we not promote it? Then uh, we finally decided that we should have some minimum number of licenses so that uh, you cannot live in this world without knowing the technology. So you should know the technology. You should know how it can assist you, how it can make your work better. So uh, those things uh, should always be uh, taken with the all possible tools like we use tools for referencing. We use tool for formatting. Similarly, this is also a tool you can consider, but. You should know that uh, what is the ethical use of tool? It's like nuclear weapon. So you can use it for constructive as well as destructive purpose. So uh, we believe that it should be used for the constructive purpose. Same thing is uh, what all AI tools are available. How to use them for uh, constructive purpose, making your research better and better. Uh, that's how I would like to start uh, my opening remark. So there, there are some questions coming. So I don't yes, know whether. Sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I will take, sir. No worry. First yeah. of all, uh, uh, I would like to clarify one thing, sir's statement that sir was not just the part of the uh, team member of the academic writing team. Rather, he was he has been the mentor of our entire concept. Uh, and uh, just uh, we just took the torch which sir gave to us. And uh, rather, we if we start with the things we didn't know, know anything about the online courses. This is a thing which sir has mentored us and we are always grateful to him and uh, his guidance and uh, as sir told that yes ai sir in the last interaction also we were discussing that yes take this as an assistive tool as an as an uh, your assistance give utilize it to get more and more ideas give them the prompt and get the ideas but not for writing but the, you cannot be dependent completely on the writing. Even uh, recently, when when I once I got the acceptance from a paper or my 3.2 impact factor journal, it was, was wonderful. It says that your acceptance is subject to the you know scrutiny for the AI content for the availability of the AI content like that. Okay, so this kind of aspect are important also. Any issue is there? Can you? Uh, Hear me? Hello. Hello. Ah, aap sun hai na mujhe? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, hai. So if any query is there, you can unmute yourself and ask the query, please. So tab hum uske baad jo hai, karte rahenge. So most welcome. Aapki koi bhi query or exam related jo bhi technical questions hai, technical problems aapko aa rahi hai, just send the email to the NTA, copy to me and I will try to forward it. I will rather I always forward it to the competent authorities for uh, getting the solutions. So if you're having any queries, you can uh, unmute yourself and you can uh, put your question before sir or uh, the uh, we will try to resolve your issues or the queries and rather as I sir told, that academic writing is more than just writing a paper and rather we had focused it for the for this particular week we have focused it for the grant proposal writing book writing scientific conference paper writing and uh, rather the last module of this particular week is for open educational resource for your digital writing skills okay so that's why it's a uh, because it is we have started our second last week content uh, week we have entered into and the content has been released. Hope you will be enjoying that particular thing. So I humbly request that you can put your queries or. Uh, and if you have put your queries in the chat, please. Unmute yourself and ask. 
So, doctor, uh, I I saw two types of queries. Yes, One sir, is please. coming from uh, Doctor Nagendra Prasad. Yes, so yes. he's uh, he's asking about identification of journal for publishing the paper. Mm -hmm. The second query, which is coming from uh, some Mr. Karthikeyan. Yes, so sir. he or she, I don't know the gender. Uh, asking okay. about some exam related query which i think very specific to you so about so, uh, exam related query don't worry i will uh, i will handle so that that you can handle uh, yes but yes. this uh, publication related query i will like to give slightly elaborative answer of this question that uh, how to identify a journal for publishing the paper it will be handled at three levels let me tell you first is the uh, you should be aware of top 10 journals in your field of research. Whatever field of research you are in, whether you are in pharmacy, whether you are in commerce, management, environmental science, uh, uh, Indology, Sanskrit, Hindi, whatever field you are, you should know at least top 10 journals in your field. This is the first requirement I will say. Many a times, when I go to interview process, candidates are not aware that uh, how to identify top 10 journals in my field. Hmm. There are few journals which are very, very popular. People generally give their names only. Nature has become a very popular journal. So people will say that nature is the top journal in the world. Some of the people will know about uh, one or two more journals. Like for example, if uh, you go through this COVID period, so in the COVID period, Lancet has become a very popular name and because a lot of COVID related studies were published in that, so that. But if I ask specifically about your specific area, that uh, what is your area in, in that? So my submission is first you identify that journal from, uh, so I generally give Web of Science, Thomson Writer as your benchmark that from Thomson Writer's uh, Web of Science database is uh, you should take uh, uh, on the basis of quartiles that in quartile they give a uh, rank of the journal rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You yes. should know that rank of your journal. Then some of the journals they publish empirical studies paper and some of the journals, they publish uh, more uh, theoretical data. For example, I come from the field of management studies. So in management studies, the most reputed journals, though people generally will call Harvard Business Review, HBR. But it is not the most popular, uh, most uh, reputed journal in our field. In our field, the journals of Academy of Management are most reputed. Now, Academy of Management uh, initially started with Academy of Management Journal, AMJ. Now, AMJ used to publish more conceptual papers. So, if you have a conceptual paper, you can think of AMJ. If you have an empirical paper, then there is another journal, Academy of Management Review. So, AMJ and AMR. So, you should understand that whether my paper is theory based, my paper is empirical based and then if you are proposing a new idea, then there is a, another journal, Academy of Management Perspective, AMP. So AMJ, AMR, AMP, that gives you clear cut idea that should I, whether I am publishing a more theoretical paper, empirical paper or a future research area and on the basis of that, your journal gets selected. So selection of the journal is based on the content of your paper that unfortunately many a times researchers themselves are not very clear that uh, whether my paper should be called as a theoretical paper whether my paper should be called as empirical paper whether my paper should be called as a future research paper so you will be able to select journal if you have clarity in your uh, research paper, clarity with respect to two, two things. One is novelty of your paper. 
that what is the novelty of your paper? And second, what methodology have you used for finding that novelty? And based on that, you can very easily identify which journal to uh, select. But my primary request is that you should be aware of top 10 journals in your area. And once you read one or two, one one paper, at least from all those top journals, you will be able to understand that why, uh, what type of genre uh, they are expecting from the uh, submission. So that way it becomes very easy to identify uh, the journal for your uh, publications. Then another question is coming from Anjali Yadav. How should a proposal be made for PDF? Postdoctoral fellowships. Now, in this case, the proposal for PDF, uh, I can give you the example for IIT Rudy. Hello. Yes, sir, sir. Soon par sir. Yeah, thank you. So I can give you the example of my institute that the proposal for PDF is uh, approved by our institute. And uh, as a faculty member, we need to write that proposal. Now, proposal when we are writing for PDF, it should be ahead of a PhD work. So that uh, what, because in the PhD, a lot of time is going for training to a researcher. PDF is something which gives you a very focused clarity of uh, the work you are going to do in a limited amount of time. PDF is not uh, as long as PhD type of proposal, where in the PhD you can take four years, five years, and sometimes more than five years also. But in PDF, uh, it has to be one or two years of work. And uh, we need a proposal which can show that I need, uh, these are the exact problems which are already identified. And this is how it is the extension of some PhD work. And then this is the exact methodology I'm going to follow. And that is what I'm going to achieve the uh, results. So if we have that clarity in my PM, uh, you can say PhD proposal is slightly loose where you have a scope that as you will go ahead in your research journey, journey there may be possibility of changing some objectives also. There may be a possibility when you can change even title also. There may be some modification in title also in the uh, later stages. But in a PDF proposal, it should be a very, very tight proposal where everything is well defined. You need this much of support, funding support, so that you can purchase this equipment and you will be doing these experiments and these are the tentative results you are going to get. So PDF proposal, we look that how much clarity of thought you have. It should not that you will start your uh, new literature review or new kind of uh, analysis or, and then only your uh, uh, work will happen. So PDF is awarded on the basis of clarity of your uh, proposals. Sir, uh, rather sir, in this particular week, we have just uh, you know, uh, discuss the research grant proposal writing uh, and uh, we could due to we, could, we haven't planned uh, we did not plan that, that post doctoral uh, you know project proposals and that wonderfully it is the yes it is the need for the students research scholar for planning the thing because obviously the grant proposals are meant for meant to be written by the faculty members only because, uh, and but the scholars can write the grant proposal for their postdoc and they, this is the i think the indispensable part of their application for the postdoc so that's wonderful sir thank you for the uh, clarification and the answer sir and uh, yes any other query if you are having please says uh, though janisha asked that yes okay, that can uh, wish can i give both of my arguments and counter arguments in my research article and for, for literature review should only include the articles in which I have rooted my research question or argument. Yeah, so Janisha, if uh, you can give argument and counter argument uh, uh, in your research paper, I will consider this is very high level of academic work. And uh, because generally 
there is a bias of researcher always and the researcher sees every research question with his or her bias so if you are so neutral that uh, you can see what is uh, in favor and what is not in favor for example let me give you a very simple question that uh, there can be a hypothesis that uh, human should be vegetarian only human should be vegetarian only i want to write a paper on this this is my hypothesis now if you give this perspective that uh, why human should only be vegetarian and then you also give counter argument that uh, if human is only vegetarian then there may be so many other types of problems will also come so if uh, there are sizable number of non vegetarian also in this world then only those problems can be handled in a uh, matter way uh, much better way so if uh, we give this kind of uh, argument it is uh, really a very high level of research i will suggest but the only problem is that you need to give a proper support to your argument and counter argument with uh, some good references it cannot be your intuitiveness that uh, you are writing your own thoughts that may be more like uh, a, a story you are giving uh, a kind of a media person those who are neutral uh, we are supposed to be so uh, then it becomes simply a act of journalism but uh, if you want to give you a research paper with the uh, arguments and counter arguments you need to have uh, enough resources enough uh, references to support both side of uh, discussions and then uh, there is a uh, second part of your question also that for literature review should i only include the articles in which i rooted my research questions or argument i will say no because uh, first you need to also explain to also explain that, uh, that how you are how doing the research are... review literature review and uh, after explaining the literature review methodology that okay if we have uh, these type of keywords so so many papers or so many articles are available and then we have filtered down these to make my research or uh, for this particular uh, paper or work uh, only these 30 40 research papers are useful so finally the detailing in your paper will be available of uh, those research papers where your uh, research question is coming from but it should not appear the main agenda in this discussion is that that you cannot be selective in taking only few research papers to support your research question you should also be aware or you also need to explain you also need to explain that uh, uh, there are huge amount of literature but uh, i am considering only this literature because of uh, these 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 limitations so uh, you cannot be ignorant about other piece of literature available but uh, because of uh, limitation and for example i want to study uh, a particular phenomena that uh, why women are under represented in national parliaments why women are under represented in national parliaments so uh, for example generally you will think of india when i say this question most of us will think about india that yes therefore we are bringing 33% women reservation in parliament but you see this question is not related to india this is a universal question you go to american parliament you go to uk parliament and where they say that uh, a very high level of women empowerment is there society is much developed even in those countries uh, women are under represented in national parliaments now if this is my research question i need to see that uh, how the representation is taken in the uh, parliaments uh, how the people are elected and then also i need to see the situation of women and men across the countries different country now in one single research it is impossible to cover all those things so i will take only selective countries maybe india or maybe let's say uh, america two countries and 
therefore my literature after that will be focused only on these two countries unfortunately what happens i have seen large number of papers and in fact it can be a limitation in many of my papers also where we are doing research in india but we will give entire literature review mm -hmm. which is published in european context or which is published in american context so you should understand that from context to context the meaning of research changes so we need to understand that on one side india is the third largest producer of research papers but at the same time we also need to see the quality of our research papers the academic writing course is uh, not simply to tell you about how to write but it is also there to emphasize that uh, what should be the objective of academic writing the objective of academic writing is that you should become independent researcher you should become independent author and at the same time you should create quality academic writing so that is uh, only possible uh, when you yourself read your paper again and again i don't know how many of us read our own paper after 5 years oh. and uh, uh, that is uh, a very simple litmus test of quality of our work agar main apne research paper ko 5 saal ke baad 10 saal ke baad khud padhta hu ki maine usme kya likha tha to aap samjhiye ki aapne kuch acha kaam kiya hai aur agar aap khud bhi apna paper kabhi nahi pad rahe ek baar chhapne ke baad तो आप थोड़ा सा इस बारे में मुझे क्वेश्चन मार्क लगाना पड़ेगा या एग्जैक्टली सर दिस इज वंडरफुल थिंग यू हैव सेड रियली और इट होस्ट टू स्पेशली फॉर आवर डिसर्टेशन और द पीएचडी थीसिस स्पेसिफिकली बिकॉज़ वंस दे आर बाउंड दे आर यू नो कैप्ड इन द अल्मिराज ओनली एंड दे आर नॉट टेकन इनटू अकाउंट इवन व्हेन वी आर राइटिंग फॉर आवर पेपर्स और अदर थिंग्स yeah obviously the academic writing shows the way that how seriously the a research should be taken because it is not just about publishing the papers it is about shaping the path of the future for the humanity for the sustainable development in every way you know uh, we are contributing in our own way for the benefit of the society basically whether whether we are doing the basic science applied science or the community services community science or uh, whether we are doing the wet lab or doing the you know uh, the empirical studies in whatever the form it is that but the ultimate aim is to progress the science or the giving the benefit to the end user that is public obviously that must be taken into the consideration which ugc has also mandated that uh, that uh, every research paper must have a social outcome or society societal connect that is mandatory part of the though it was it has been mandatory already but yeah it is officially it is the part of synopsis and one of the headings of your synopsis of uh, proposals of phd students yes very correct yes. in fact uh, one question is coming how to prepare a synopsis for phd admission in journal mm -hmm. and uh, in fact uh, since uh, in our system where i am Uh, we do not expect uh, any synopsis for phd admission our admission is uh, done on the basis of uh, uh, your uh, clarification in uh, net gate grf kind of examination and then we invite you for interview and based on your performance in interview we select you for your uh, phd and then you have to do some course work Uh, after completing the course work uh, then you remain in touch with your supervisor and uh, with the help of your supervisor's guidance uh, you make a uh, proposal we call it as synopsis and uh, that you have to present in front of a research committee and once that research committee approves that uh, proposal then you are finally registered as a phd student so uh, uh, here the role of supervisor and student uh, is very important that uh, how well they define the problem how well they define the methodology how uh, i i feel that uh, a lot of problem comes 
uh, because I am from management social science field. So I will say that uh, when students are writing their proposal, they are not very aware about the availability of the data. And the uh, maximum problem I am facing that students uh, develop a proposal. For example, one of my own student, uh, I'm uh, giving you my own problem. Uh, he developed uh, a proposal on sustainable supply chains where he wanted to collect data from electric vehicle manufacturers. And then it became very difficult because most of the manufacturers were not ready to entertain him. Uh, they were not giving him any kind of uh, enough time. No data was available in the public domain also. And data which was available in the public domain, that was not sufficient for the research purpose. So uh, ultimately, it became so difficult that he had to change uh, slightly his research topic so that he can do research. So when you are making a proposal, rather thinking very fancy, be more realistic that uh, how much data you can get, what is the accessibility of that data. And that is one important thing I say, I, I will recommend, recommend all of you when you are making your proposal. So that is uh, the suggestion while making the proposal, whether it is uh, after taking the admission or before taking the admission. Uh, that is one thing. Then yes. uh, Arun Kumar is asking whether a funded project has uh, more probability of getting a paper published in the journal than the uh, other means uh, doing on your own. Even if uh, that paper which is uh, coming from the funded project has uh, uh, no novelty and poor quality of manuscript. Generally, in our uh, research papers uh, which are coming because of some kind of a research grant, we write acknowledgement for the funding agency. There is a standard practice of writing the acknowledgement. But let me tell you, this acknowledgement is uh, no guarantee of accepting your paper in a journal. No, no, no guarantee at all. It uh, may be getting accepted in a very low quality journal, but when it is a paper coming from the research grant uh, and uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, I feel it should be a high quality paper. So it should be published in a good quality journal with proper uh, blind peer review kind of systems. So uh, I don't think that uh, means my personal experience is not in line with your uh, understanding. I will say that uh, even if it is a funded project, uh, it has to be checked or it is being checked already on uh, parameters of novelty and high standard of manuscript. But uh, let me also tell you one more thing. Uh, I think Professor Sebelty must have already told you. Entire review process is done by humans only. I get so many research papers for review purpose. Professor Sebelty also gets many papers for review activity. So, how are you looking that particular paper? Sometimes our research scholars also get for review. Those research scholars who are submitting papers in journals, so their name also comes in the database of the journal. And therefore, they also start getting the uh, review activities, they also get papers for review. So it is all human activity. Sometimes it may happen that uh, if reviewer is not very experienced and uh, reviewer may take a call of uh, accepting the manuscript, which may not be of very high standard. So it's not always 100% correct that something, uh, if you go to web of science and you see about nature, which uh, we all consider as a very high reputed journal. But in nature's data also you can see uh, Professor Samilty can show you maybe uh, in other live session mein unhone kabhi dikhaya bhi hoga ki nature ke bhi 25% papers aise hai 25% papers aise hai nature ke jinka ek bhi citation nahi hai aasta zero yeah. citation even in journal like nature. So which is uh, very difficult to believe that something which is getting published in nature, which we consider is of so high value, so uska paper bhi kaise koi site huye bagar reh sakta hai, but that is the fact. So nature jaise journal mein bhi kabhi kabhi is tarike ka koi kaam chab sakta hai, jo ho sakta hai utna jada impactful na ho, aur kabhi kabhi koi chote journal mein bhi asa paper chab jata hai, 
जो आपको लगता है कि यार ये तो पूरी दुनिया को बदल सकता था और ये तो नेचर में छपना चाहिए था या एच में छपना चाहिए था या ए में छपना चाहिए था या लेंसेंट में छपना चाहिए था सो इट हैपन्स इट्स ऑल ह्यूमन प्रोसेस आपने किस जगह भेजा आपका पेपर किस रिव्यूअर के हाथ में चला गया उस रिव्यूअर का उस समय माइंडसेट क्या चल रहा था वो अपनी वाइफ से झगड़ा करके आपका पेपर चेक कर रहा था बैठ कर रिव्यू कर रहा था गुस्से में तो वो सब काम खराब हो जाएगा आपका भी तो ये थोड़ा बहुत इसमें प्लस माइनस चलता है ये कोई परफेक्ट साइंस नहीं है हमेशा Yeah, it is about just the perception of few people about your paper. That's why I uh, call upon the uh, learners. Yes, they don't get demotivated uh, if your paper is rejected because it's just a you know relative decision uh, of few persons regarding your paper. You know, you know, you never know. They, if you send your manuscript to another journal, maybe of higher impact even, uh, it may get published. recently i got a paper which uh, which was you know uh, rejected by a impact factor 2 but it was accepted in impact factor 3.2 so i cannot say that the uh, the persons because it depends on the perception or maybe the requirement of a particular journal uh, yes, matches yes, the scope yes, yes absolutely i i 100% agree yes. there can be many things uh, uh, which act simultaneously it is the requirement of the journal who is the reviewer at that time and uh, uh, it happens uh, that uh, a paper is not accepted in a lower rank journal low impact factor journal and may get accepted in a higher rank journal it is it is uh, all possible it's all possible means uh, there cannot be two uh, means uh, view on this aspect yeah because the decisions are not just absolute they are just relative with respect yes. to some conditions okay बिल्कुल बिल्कुल अगर वो बहुत अच्छा कैंडिडेट आया तो उसके बाद वाला कैंडिडेट बहुत अच्छा होते हुए भी उसकी मार्किंग थोड़ी लो रह जाती है और पहला वाला कैंडिडेट थोड़ा सा बुद्धू टाइप का आ गया तो उसके बाद वाला थोड़ा एवरेज कैंडिडेट को भी अच्छे नंबर मिल जाते हैं क्योंकि आप हमेशा रिलेटिव तरीके से चीज को चेक करते हैं कि भाई और ये आप में से बहुत सारे लोग एग्जामिनर होंगे कॉपीज चेक करते होंगे अपनी यूनिवर्सिटीज की तो उसमें भी ऐसा होता है कि आपका कॉपी का जब बंडल रहता है तो उसमें पिछली कॉपी कैसी थी आपका उससे धीरे धीरे उसके बेसिस पर रिलेटिव मार्किंग होती रहती है हमेशा और इसीलिए बंडल में जो सबसे ऊपर वाली कॉपी होती है उसके साथ थोड़ा सा इनजस्टिस हो जाता है और मैं हमेशा ये कोशिश करता हूँ कि जो मैंने पांच कॉपियां सबसे पहले चेक की होती है उनको मैं फिर दोबारा भी चेक करता हूँ टोटल नहीं करता सर मैं भी उनकी टोटल नहीं करता पहले हाँ, बाद में जो कि उसको वापस से पूरे बैच ने कैसा काम किया है Yeah, exactly. It happens. One one thing before I skip, I would like to add to your uh, information to all the learners. If someone is interested for to do their PG or the research in Japan, there is max fellowship for by for by the government of Japan is open for uh, application for sciences, humanities, management, and uh, uh, for PG and research. It is completely funded fellowship by the max. Uh, uh the japanese government fellowship is there it is open just go to the website of the embassy of japan in india uh, you will find the max m e x t write down not next it is max m e x t the it has just opened and uh, i think uh, within one month it will be closing so you can try uh, with your proposals and other things uh, just explore the opportunity uh, for doing the pg and oblique or the research because but in most of the circumstances pg you have to spend the at least one year before actually starting the your pg to learn the japanese uh, in most of the circumstances only a few universities uh, the medium instruction is english so you just explore if it is available please go ahead and especially for the research there is no language issues there you can try and uh, many people have done the phd's from uh, japan and the wonderful environment of research there so i just i wanted because we have just and given the uh, module regarding the grant proposal and all the things so i thought that i should share this information with all of you so please do take the advantage of this uh, opportunity even the faculty members can uh, take the advantage of this opportunity apart from jsps that is japanese society for promotion of science yes please any other query you can unmute yourself and uh, 
आप अपनी बात रख सकते हैं या कोई क्वेरी आपकी हो और मैं बताना चाहूंगा हम काफी बल्कि एग्जाम रजिस्ट्रेशन जो चल रहे हैं उसमें भी लगभग हम लीड ही कर रहे हैं पूरे स्वयं के कोर्सेज को जो भी यूजी पीजी के कोर्सेज हैं तो आई वुड लाइक टू एड दैट कि हमें जितना आपने मेहनत कर ली है थोड़ा एग्जाम और दे दें एक सर्टिफिकेशन हो जाएगा और आपके सीवी का पार्ट होगा खासकर स्टूडेंट्स को मैं कहना चाहूंगा हालांकि मेरा कभी भी इसमें नहीं रहता हमने शुरू से ये बात कही है सर ने भी अभी को बात की थी दैट वीट दैट यू नो अकेडमिक राइटिंग इज नॉट द कोर्स विच कैन गिव यू सम काइंड ऑफ घुट्टी और अदर थिंग दैट यू विल बी ए पेपर मिल आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस कोर्स it depends totally on your individual capacity or the field of research uh, or how you are implementing the or how you are practicing this the concept or the thing which we have given uh, because we are also the learners this is the thing which we need to learn with the practice even when we send the article it is not the guarantee that it will be accepted in one single shot in one single journal in the so this is the process of learning so if you have learn or gone through the all the content please do register for the exam and uh, uh, this time the nt has given the full uh, uh, you know efforts to give your examination centers at the nearest cities and most and almost all the central universities are having these exam centers now this is the new initiative which have been started from this cycle uh, so if any other query is remaining you can ask or we can wind up the session if uh, you allow and um, the, we are very grateful to professor rajat uh, aur aapne unke do week ki samay diye hi hai we last week humne jo hai saturday ko humne ka week diya jisme bahut acha time jo ek baat main aur sir aapse bhi janna chahunga last jaate jaate ek point team spirit ki humne baat ki research and the team spirit ye humne course mein bhi isko specially rakha hai academic writing mein so sir ka thought tha ki yes that team spirit or the team management in the research it's also an integral part ha अगर मैं कुछ शब्दों में उसको आप समेटना चाहें सर यस सो आई थिंक पर्टिकुलरली इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंस एंड मैनेजमेंट आल्सो टीम प्लेज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल व्हेन यू आर वर्किंग इन ए लैब इट बिकम्स अ टीम द कैप्टन ऑफ द टीम इज सुपरवाइजर एंड ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स आर देंबर्स ऑफ प्लेयर्स ऑफ दैट टीम नो वेन वी आर वर्किंग इन ए टीम one important thing is we should not be greedy the one who is uh, senior to us and uh, for example i am in a team i was in that lab since last 3 years you joined that department now you also become part of my team now if i am writing a research paper generally what happens that uh, i will expect from day one that i should also get a authorship of that paper as i am also part of that team my first request is please do not be that greedy it will be dangerous for both of you both means both the persons who are in that uh, team because when we are going for the selection committees these days we ask contribution of individual member in that list of authors and just by being part of that team it should not be expected that uh, you should get the authorship of that particular thing so if somebody is senior that senior person and supervisor let them be the author once you will become senior you will become the author of your papers and your juniors will help you so we need to develop that culture in our team that uh, how the authorship of the papers are given when multiple papers uh, when multiple authors are there uh, it becomes really a very challenging thing and it goes generally for uh, disadvantage of the research entire team gets disadvantage of that that is one thing in the same line i will also like to address one question which was coming from anjali yadav about the review papers that how to write a review papers now lately my experience with review paper is not very good why not good because in many institutions for your assistant professor selection slip we are not considering the review papers that may be a news for many of you because many a time review papers are unable to give you some new insights they are simply based on so many uh, tools now these days are good tools are available 
you can get a lot of metadata and uh, you can do the analysis using those tools and you just put those uh, graphs figures in your research paper and you get a paper published. So uh, authorities, the decision makers are not considering the review papers. So review paper should be an add on that is OK, but review paper should not be your minimum requirement for a particular uh, position for a promotion etc so uh, otherwise it may be a uh, means a very uh, sad news for you if you are depending on a review paper or authorities in the review paper ko consider nahi kiya to fir aapko thoda sa bura lag sakta hai sir, so, last ke paas agar wo ticket pehle ki hum baat kare sir to review जी. paper were uh, meant to be uh, upon invitation only that to only from the expert पहले ऐसा हुआ सोचते हैं रिव्यू पेपर आप तभी लिख सकते हो जब आपको उस सब्जेक्ट की पूरी ए टू जेड एक अच्छी होलिस्टिक जानकारी हो तो as a initial researcher i will say that please refrain from writing research, uh, review papers you should write research uh, review paper only when you have complete command on the subject and then you can say that how things are moving in that subject kyunki uh, research review paper likhne ke liye aaj ki tarikh mein jaise main thodi der pehle ai ki baat kar raha tha there are various ai tools available for literature review also सो so, इस वजह से रिव्यू पेपर्स की इंपॉर्टेंस को काफी कम हो गया है डोंट डिपेंड ऑन दैट टीम पे काम करें जो सीनियर है उसकी हेल्प करें आपका फिर जो जूनियर होगा वो आपकी हेल्प करेगा और इस तरीके से वी विल बी एबल टू हेल्प इच अदर एंड द बेनिफिट्स विल आल्सो नॉट बी सेक्रीफाइज अदरवाइज अगर हम एक ही फ्रूट uh, को सब मिलकर खाने की कोशिश करेंगे तो वो पता लगा किसी का भी पेट नहीं भर पाएगा वो फ्रूट है ना तो आपका एक रिसर्च पेपर एक ऑथर जो उसका मेन uh, ऑथर है और एक आपका सुपरवाइजर तो बस उनके बीच में रहने दीजिए और इस तरीके से बारी बारी से सबको उसका uh, आनंद आता रहेगा वन थिंग आई वुड लाइक ऑल्सो लाइक टू एड दैट नाउ डेज द सीवीज हैज बिकम रिव्यू सेंट्रिक मतलब इन मोस्ट ऑफ द सीवीज ऑफ द यंग रिसर्चर वी कैन सी दैट देर इज ए नाइन टू वन रेशियो ऑफ रिव्यूज टू रिसर्च मतलब वो नौ रिव्यू के बाद वो एक रिसर्च लिख रहा है और बेसिकली दे आर रिव्यू साइंटिस्ट कभी वो इस टॉपिक पे लिखता है कभी वो मैंने भी कहा कि एक एक एफर्ट्स एक साइंटिस्ट देर मस्ट बी ए यू नो एक आइडिया ए फील्ड ऑफ स्टडी यू मस्ट फोकस नॉट राइटिंग रिव्यू ऑन वन ए ऑन टॉपिक ए टॉपिक बी नेक्स्ट रिव्यू टॉपिक सी नेक्स्ट रिव्यू एंड इफ यू आर एनरिचिंग यूर सी वी विद दिस काइंड ऑफ बुक एंड डिफरेंट फ्लावर्स ऑफ सो कॉल्ड रिव्यूज आई थिंक इट इज डेट्रीमेंटल फॉर यूर research career if you are genuinely going for the research institution or going to the for the research it can be okay for a senior professor yeah. where bouquet is possible if, yeah if uh, you are a senior professor but when, when you are in a early stage of your uh, professional life uh, uh, you have just started you need to be focused you need to be more focused don't create a bouquet they obviously is a, pro a professor is guiding maybe a guiding research scholar 10 research scholar seven research scholar so they may have different topics so obviously the professors will be having a different different kind of uh, areas okay but researchers the a particular phd scholar i'm calling talking about or the young researcher who have entered in a particular field of area they must be focused on that particular area and not opt for for a, early uh, career uh, 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 there, there are two more uh, hands up okay. one is mithun mithun is asking uh, okay. about a question and meg has also raised the hand yeah please uh, uh yeah please bole bhai mithun uh, may I... yeah unmute oh, please hello unmute sir yourself. my name is ji uh, ji yeah hello unmute. sir my name is mamta mithun mm hmm so sir actually i'm doing my uh, master from igno university as it is distance uh, learning mm -hmm. and uh, it is in sociology so there is nothing option like to write a thesis if i want to do my phd further so what do you will suggest sir how could i complete my phd even though there is no option for thesis writing or nobody is uh, on us to guide us okay so you are doing uh, your masters in sociology and now let's say let me tell you that uh, 
management is a field which is uh, ready to take students from all fields because ultimately uh, sociology can also be very very effectively used in uh, you can say uh, management not only in management particularly when you see a uh, lot of uh, rural development uh, and uh, rural marketing rural consumer behavior in those areas uh, you have good scope of uh, uh, i don't know which branch of sociology you are working with but uh, there is a good scope of doing research and uh, we have uh, all the researches which are happening in the field of demography that how the demography is changing and with changing demographic what type of new skills etc will be required uh, for example, uh, in our country now there is a lot of debate happening about caste census. Uh, there are different types of political party. You may come with good researches in that area itself that and that is core sociology I feel. So uh, you have a scope in sociology itself. Uh, it may be possible that uh, in IGNU professors may not be interested in research. But uh, in other universities, there will be a scope of, uh, I, I know at IIT Roorkee in our uh, humanities and social science department, uh, uh, there are professors in sociology area and they are guiding PhD thesis in sociology only. So you, I will say that uh, you just need to identify suitable uh, supervisor and uh, you should continue to work in sociology only and there are uh, PhDs which are happening in sociology and uh, from if you are from Delhi, you can go to IIT Delhi. There are also professors of uh, sociology. There are professors of sociology in DU. There is a full department of sociology. Sorry to interrupt you, sir, but uh, how to uh, approach to any PhD, uh, you know, like uh, any type of IITs? Because uh, right now I just written my gate in humanity and I have cleared it. And uh, I don't know so, with so, that. So, so, so IITs every year they give uh, admissions twice a year. So like uh, for this uh, autumn cycle, our last date is uh, last date was 10th of April. Just we missed by four days. So the last last date for application was 10th of April. Now you can apply uh, somewhere around September or October to start for the next spring semester, which will start from January 2025. So all IITs take admissions twice a year. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, you should be aware of. Okay, and sir, one more thing. Like as of now, I'm part of one NGO that is Netherlands based NGO, and I'm working here remotely. So I have written some of the article on education, and I'm Very also good. doing some kind of uh, uh, research in uh, European Union uh, uh, re related projects. Very so good. will it be useful to show in the PhD, uh, like when I'm going for interview or something? Can I yes. mention mm -hmm. these thing in yes, my? Yes, you should. You should mention. This will yes. help you at least that uh, community will understand that you have good idea of data collection if you want to collect data from the field you already have some connections uh, and uh, it will be a added advantage to your application yeah rather Thank for so the much. sociology kind of uh, projects or this kind of community base or whatever uh, there are a lot of opportunities in the western world also in western universities also for doing the PhD you can also explore the things uh, rather they give the wonderful grant especially for the societal connect uh, issues they provide for the environment for the you know uh, if you go for the waste management or other aspects uh, if you can connect for education uh, like UNDP also provide the uh, various uh, fundings for those kind of projects for, for, for NGOs also and even for the study programs uh, the various universities give wonderful scholarship or fellowship for doing the PhDs even so you can also explore uh, Apart from the you know our prestigious IITs across the country, you can also explore the various uh, you know state of the art institutes across the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Hello. I have also uh, you know uh, given the links for the Max Fellowship. Someone was asking. So go from uh, this is the Embassy of Japan. You just enter into in India. You will find that particular link. Yes. Any anyone else? Uh, Someone was trying to say something. Kisi koi koi baki query ho to yes, you are more. Uh, yes, bole. Sir, uh, Ajay sir. Uh, sir, main main question bol raha hu. Uh, sir, aapke course 
उसका जो बुक आपने रिकमेंड किया है आपकी जो बुक है वो हम लोग उसको गो थ्रू कर रहे हैं कोर्स के साथ में पर उसमें एक प्रॉब्लम है जो मैं आपके साथ शेयर करना चाहता हूँ अगर आप अदरवाइज ना लें कि उसमें जो भी डायग्राम है जो भी पिक्चर्स हैं वो सब बिल्कुल एकदम ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट है उसमें उसको चेक करने में या उसको स्टडी करने में या उसको एनालाइज करने में बहुत तकलीफ होता है प्राइस so that that was very much important so pri- publishers said uh-huh. they are rather going for the you know uh, you know ornamental aspect of particular book which should focus on the content i think this was <laughs> okay okay thank you sir thank you. because of every learners uh, uh, this bahut important hota hai sir kyunki picture ya drawing ya koi bhi graph wo apne aap mein explaining explain karta hai bahut sari cheeze aur wo black and white hone se wo sari cheeze hai jab aap usko gray scale mein le jate hai to thoda antar to aata hi hai cheez mein और राधर हमारे जो इंटरनेशनल ये जो बुक जा रही है उसमें सारे कलर्ड फिगर्स हैं तो जो इंटरनेशनल परचेज okay. होती है अमेजन डॉट कॉम से अक्रॉस द कंट्री अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड जो जा रही है उसमें जो है आ, वो जो है बकायदा ग्लॉसी पेपर में जाती है बिकॉज वो डॉलर्स में जाती है इट्स ऑल अबाउट दू मॉनिटरी आस्पेक्ट जी सर अच्छा एक क्वेश्चन था सर मुझे लगभग ट्वेंटी टू का इंडस्ट्रियल एक्सपीरियंस है बेसिकली मैं जो है इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एंड ऑटोमेशन इंजीनियर हूँ और पिछले पांच साल से मैं इंस्टीट्यूट में एज ए फैकल्टी भी काम कर रहा हूँ तो अभी जैसे सर ने कहा कि रिव्यू पेपर्स आजकल थोड़ा सा अभी मेरे लिए क्या है कि मैं अपने फील्ड का या मेरी नॉलेज का तो मुझे सफिशिएंट नॉलेज है अभी चूंकि एजुकेशन में हूँ तो मेरा सारा फोकस एजुकेशन से पर ज्यादा हुआ है तो मैंने उस पर रिव्यू पेपर्स लिखे हुए हैं तो क्या ये रिव्यू पेपर्स के वास्तव में अभी सीवी के लिए उतना ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं हुआ जैसा कि अभी सर बता रहे थे रजत सर <laughs> it depends on the university or institution in which you are applying i think why can rajesh sir contribute karna chahe yes, to yes, yes so 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 uh, you are correct that it is uh, up to the people who are reviewing your bio data and uh, generally uh, let's say <coughs> if you are going to a uh, low tier institution so they will just see that <coughs> how many papers are published as you come <coughs> to a very high tier institution they will see mm-hmm. productivity of your research work whether uh, mm-hmm. what is your citations what is your h index uh, in which mm-hmm. uh, then they will also see uh, whether your papers are published in uh, a star a journals uh, q1 mm-hmm. q2 category and then if mm-hmm. you go even better institutions uh, they will see what type of papers you are producing whether these are the review papers or uh, some kind of uh, empirical studies you have done so uh, mm-hmm. it is uh, generally the institutions uh, quality also reflected when mm. uh, uh, you are being checked on some mm. kind of uh, improving criteria the bar is continuously rising as you mm. go to uh, let's say one institution which is not even nac accredited then nac b nac b plus nac a a plus a double plus so as you are going up and yes, up sir. your your bar will Uh, become higher and higher when the iits i think in the iit performa when you apply for the iits i i, I have seen the performa they just consider only sci index journals if you go for the yes, science they, yes, yeah so, so that so, you would they were not taking yes, my 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 all articles published in sci index journals only and uh, i have a few patent published uh, and uh, patent also but because of review uh, as uh, my situation i have a 26 total years experience now so i am not starting a research at this moment but i can review no no you can review but uh, you see one important thing is uh, for what as i said that review paper if you are having let's say five papers with you and yes, you are sir. applying for let's say assistant professor employment at iit roorkee yes. so out of five if you have two review papers mm-hmm. there is no problem because there three is- papers are coming from your empirical study coming mm-hmm. so with those three papers two review papers very good co- combination excellent combination okay. but if you come with just three papers and out mm-hmm. of three papers two papers are review papers then mm-hmm. comes the question yes sir 
I can understand. Now. I would like to add, sir, uh, about hmm. the sole authorship. You are having hmm. 20 papers, and all, hmm. in all the papers, you are the sole author there. Yes, so, sir. Somewhere you might be getting the API if you go for the UGC. You will, you might be getting a wonderful API. But I think okay. many of the institute will not take up it positively that all of your uh, papers uh, hmm. or your entire career are or more maximum papers are the sole authorship in in hmm. your research. That too, if you are especially you in the in the wet lab, if you are doing in, in hmm. sciences, life sciences, sometime it is taken negatively. Maybe. Hmm. What is your take, sir? Yes, okay, uh, soul papers uh, at the stage of researcher is not taken in a very positive way because sometimes you it means that uh, you are not a team member. So mm -hmm. that uh, message is very clear about the so it has to be a balance between team and your individual identity also. If all your papers are as the second author, third author, fourth author, that is also not good. So you need to have a bouquet of uh, multiple things. In one or mm. two paper, you are a sole author. One or two paper with your supervisor where you are the first author, supervisor is mm. the corresponding mm. author. And one or mm. two paper, you can be third, fourth author also where you mm. are showing that I am a team member also. So if we, but uh, at a young researcher level who is just mm. applying for assistant professor position, I think all these things are not possible. But hmm. uh, uh, you should understand that uh, how you are publishing that hmm. itself reflect your personality. If hmm. uh, you are publishing in a team, you are also publishing with your supervisor. Only supervisor is your co-author and you are having one or two paper as co uh, sole author. All these things are uh, very much liked and uh, hmm. we really value if such type of CV comes to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you, dear learners. And uh, I regarding the max policy, I would like to add this is meant for 2025 admissions, not for two, 2024. That's why the criteria are to be fulfilled up to 2025 and the admissions will be on August or September. It is not for 2024. It is already closed in 2023. So they are one year ahead uh, for all the procedures. So please uh, do keep it this thing in your mind. So, dear learners, so thanks a lot for the a vibrant interactive sessions. And uh, we are always there as uh, in the discussion forum for answering your queries. We, my expert, uh, subject matter experts and uh, teaching assistants, we are there with you. And I humbly thank uh, Professor Rajat for sparing his valuable time for us for answering the queries. So, thank you, sir. Bhot bhot dhanyavad. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to meet these uh, dynamic researchers and uh, learners of your program. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May, I, may I leave the meeting now? Yes, sir. Please, sir. Wait. Thank, thank you, you, thank sir. you. All the best to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very and much. Happy, and happy Knowledge Day. Today is the Knowledge Day. Knowledge Day. Yes, sir. Thank, April. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir.